Merry Christmas. It's been four weeks of preparation as we've celebrated the tremendous Advent season. And as our opening song said, we have come to adore. O oh, come, let us adore you. The past few hours here at All Saints Parish, I would say, have very much so touched my heart. To truly see our parish come together to greet the Christ child. For those of you who are visitors with us, beginning on December 23rd at 8 o'clock in the morning and ending and going until this morning, all through the night, at all four campuses of our parish, we had adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament. And around the clock, parishioners came to all four parishes. And as I drove around to the four campuses this morning to clean things up and pick up the binders, I quickly paged through the sign-in sheets. Over 375 people of this parish spent an hour in silent prayer before our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. That is unbelievable. Throughout the entire Advent season, I've been hearing confessions, as we normally do every single week here at the parish. And yet, as it got close to Christmas, I added more times for people to come to confession. And people responded tremendously. I heard an hour and 45 minutes of confession this morning, over an hour of confessions last night, on top of the normal weekly schedule. Not to mention the 170-some people that came to confession on the first Friday this past month. Why did people come to confession? Because they want to adore the Lord. And they know that their sins keep them from doing that. They know that the struggles that they have in their life should be thrown on the Lord, not on themselves. And this God that we adore, this God that we worship, is a God of tremendous, tremendous mercy. For myself as a priest, I can't say that could, anything could have been better than what's happened in the past few days here at this parish. It truly has been a tremendous blessing. Some of you know that I practice a pretty crazy Advent. I don't allow myself to listen to Christmas music. I don't decorate my house early. So I've just really started where some people started like the day after Thanksgiving. I've been waiting for weeks to, sell, to sing the song that we sang as our opening hymn. And I truly believe that it's an inspired song. And so for my homily this evening, we're actually uh, going to take a little look at this song, and hopefully it'll blow your mind and you'll realize why it is by far my all-time favorite Christmas song. So pull out your hymnal, your little uh, song sheet here. If you don't have a song sheet, because there's a lot of people here, it's also number 314 in the seasonal missalette, which you might have one of those. Uh, you can have one or the other, maybe. So you're more than welcome to sing along with me. I will be saying pause as we make our way through this theological masterpiece, which I truly believe talks about exactly what we're doing today and what our church celebrates on this most sacred of all nights. O oh, come, all ye faithful, Joyful and triumphant, stop. <laughs> so ask yourself the question, are we faithful? Are we God's faithful people? I will tell you that some, there's some days I struggle being faithful. There's some days that I'm not as faithful as I should be. But in my heart, through my baptism, through my living out of the graces that God gives me, I know that I'm part of that number that God has chosen. Am I joyful? I'm joyful. I get to have a cup of coffee after this Mass. I'm pretty jacked. <laughs> Are we triumphant? This is a phrase that some of you might be like, well, what, triumphant over what? Raise your hand if you're a sinner. If you're a sinner, and you've ever tried to overcome your sins, then you're triumphant. You are triumphant as a Christian because you are participating in what we refer to as the church militant. The church militant are those who are out fighting 
against evil, fighting against sin, fighting against the things that keep us from being who we truly know that God is calling us to be. And thus we are triumphant. We are triumphant against the evil one. We are triumphant against Satan. We are triumphant against ourselves that we know we often need to leave behind so that we can become who God is calling us to be. O come ye, O come ye to We come to Bethlehem. Some of you, I don't expect any of you to, but my homily last year was really all about Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem actually means house of bread. So where are all these faithful going? Where are these faithful people who are joyful and triumphant and overcoming their sins and fighting against the evil? And where are they going? They're going to Bethlehem. And the word Bethlehem means house of bread. Where was Jesus born? We heard last week in Micah chapter 5 from the prophet Micah that Bethlehem is one of the smallest of all places in Judah. Yet the Messiah is born in Bethlehem because the town says what the, the Savior will be. The Savior will become bread. The Savior will become food. The Savior will become a meal which we are called to feed upon. Jesus says very clearly, I am the bread that has come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Savior born in Bethlehem, the place that we go is a constant reminder to us that it is our Eucharistic faith. It is the body and blood of our Lord that feeds us again and again and again. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. In the order of creation, angels are better than us. Angels are spiritual beings which have no bodies. In the order of creation, Angels are the highest of beings. Jesus is the king not just of humanity. He is the king of all creation. He is the king of even the angels. And thus we unite with all of heaven when we rejoice in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Second verse. The second verse, a lot of people actually struggle singing it, I'll be honest with you, because it's actually sometimes hard to fit with the notes. But this second verse, in just a few moments, we're going to stand and we're going to profess our creed. This second verse literally is the Nicene Creed set to music. God of God, light of light. Pause. What, what's being sung there? Who is Jesus co-equal with? The Father. The Father and Jesus are one. Although he becomes man, and be, although he takes on flesh, he is in total union with the Father. Continuing. He comes forth from the virgin's womb. Our very God begotten, not created. Pause. That just, we just proclaim that Jesus is not only God, God from God, light from light, but he comes forth from the virgin womb, which means what? He's a man. Jesus Christ is God and man all at the exact same time. That is our salvation. Just for a second, like just kind of nudge the person next to you. Just so you know, you, can, you could have done that to God. God was literally in the flesh. He wasn't just some sort of figment of our imagination. He wasn't just some thought. He wasn't just some idea of a philosopher. Jesus Christ is literally a historical person. He's in the historical record of the world. He existed. And if he existed, then we have to wrestle with the question. If he was born of Mary, and he did exist, and he was born in Bethlehem, and he was crucified by Pontius Pilate in Jerusalem, we have to ask ourselves a question. And there's only one answer to this question. If Jesus Christ truly existed, if he was a man, that he was either one of three things. He was either a liar, 
and really, really evil because he told people that he was God and he knew he wasn't God. And that makes him a liar and evil person. Because anyone who lies to people, and Jesus said he was God. So is Jesus a liar? Is the world's largest religion based off of a, a liar? He's either a liar or he's a lunatic. What's a lunatic? Well, he told people he was God because he thought he was God, but he wasn't because he was crazy. You're gonna to get together at family gatherings. You know crazy people. <laughs> Would the 12 apostles have died for a crazy person? Because all 11 of them died, Judas committed suicide. Would all 11 apostles, wouldn't one of them have thought, this guy's a lunatic. He's saying he's God, but he's not. They didn't. What's the only option? He's a, he's a liar, he's a lunatic, or what's the third option? That he's actually the Lord, that he is God. And that this man born of Mary is God. And if he's God, then we have to ask, we have to respond to him. A liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God all, glory in the highest. Pause. Every single time that we come to Mass and it's a solemnity, we sing the Gloria. Every time that we come to the altar of the Lord, we participate in heavenly worship. All of the angels in heaven are constantly singing glory to God in the highest and peace to people of goodwill. That was the greeting to the shepherds. The shepherds that came to adore our Lord were greeted by angels who prompted them to go and worship the Messiah. Whenever you struggle in your life, whenever you struggle in your faith, whenever you struggle in anything, the angels are right there. One thing that I love about, angel, about Christmas is that people actually believe in angels. Angels are awesome. They are a mighty force and power in our world. And every single one of you has one. Every single one of you has a guardian angel at your side at this moment. Our guardian angel is constantly there to lead us to Jesus, to strive to keep us from sin, yet we have to recognize their presence and allow them to lead us to the Lord so, we can be, so, we, so that we can become who the good Lord is calling us to be. Last verse. This, notice how this verse is no longer about the angels. It's no longer about theology. This verse is about us. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Pause. We just said, yea, Lord, we greet you, born this happy morning. I want to challenge us every single day to sing this song, and I mean it. When you get out of bed every single morning, you have a choice every single morning to greet the Lord or to say, I'm going to do it myself. To submit yourself to the Lord or to say, you want to know what, God? I don't really need your help except when things are bad. I don't really need your help except when, you know, everything's falling apart. No, every morning we are called to greet the Lord. Not just on Christmas morning. But every morning to consecrate ourselves to Him. Every morning to ask for His help. Every morning to put our hands into His. And to realize that He wants to guide us every step of the way. And then it says, after we greet Him, it says, Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Raise your hand if you've bought some Christmas presents. Raise your hand if you're excited about giving them out. Good. Don't forget the most important Christmas present you're supposed to give this Christmas season. And that's yourself. What is the greatest way for you to glorify the Lord? To give your life to the Lord. To surrender your life to the Lord. 
to realize we can't do it ourselves. To realize that without Him, we have nothing. The greatest gift that Christ wants this Christmas is your heart. And we give glory to the Lord by surrendering everything to Him. And thus, this beautiful song, I truly believe, puts forth what we hold in our hearts during this sacred time. And thus we sing very, very beautifully with faith in our hearts. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. I ask that we do this every day. That every day of our lives we adore the Lord. That every day of our lives we recognize Him not as a lunatic, not as a liar, but as the Lord. That every day we recognize Him as co-equal with the Father and the Spirit. That every day we wake up in the morning to greet Him. And every night we go to bed thanking and singing His praises. This Christmas day is an opportunity for us to recognize again the goodness of the Lord. May we truly be filled with joy on this sacred night. And may we allow the splendor of Christ, born of Mary, capture our hearts tonight and every day of our lives. Amen.